so we we'll start with folic acid. And I just want to show you that folic acid is what we get from the diet. We cannot, it's a vitamin. That means we cannot make it. So we get folic acid from the diet. We have one enzyme that will convert it to the active form. And the active form of folic acid is called tetrahydrofolate. Again, you don't need to memorize structure or anything, but that's the active, biologically active form called THF. Okay? The enzyme that we have is called dihydrofolate reductase. One enzyme, but we have to get the folic acid from the diet, converting it to this active form. Now, I want you to see this highlighted part. Folic tetrahydrofolate, the best way to think of, uh, of it is that it is a carrier of one carbon molecules. So you have a formal carbon with a, a carbonyl, a carbon here, double bond there, CH, CH2, methylene, methyl. There are a few other forms. We've already covered this one briefly when we were talking about methane. There are at least uh, six or seven different forms of one carbons that can be carried by tetrahydrofolate. So in that sense, tetrahydrofolate becomes the donor or acceptor of these one carbons. Okay? That's its function. Note the three processes it is involved in. Purine synthesis, purine nucleotides. That means without THF, you cannot synthesize adenine and guanine nucleotides, that ATP, GTP. Without uh, THF, you cannot synthesize thymidine. And without THF, you cannot synth resynthesize methionine. That's just a few of the THF requirements. Adenine and thymidine are... Uh, adenine nucleotides and thymidine are extremely important. The reason they're important because without nucleotides, you can't make nucleic acids. And without nucleic acids, you can't have cell division, replication, and all of that. 